Welcome, boys and girls. This is going to be my winter project. I'm going to be building a huge bookcase to hold all my goodies. Um, my name is David, and I live in Northern Virginia. And it's not terribly cold in my house, but proper headgear is required. So I have my monkey hat on. And as you can see, I laid out my bookcase with painter's tape. This is uh, almost three quarter inch thick tape, which means it's almost the same thickness as the plywood that I plan on using for the um, bookshelf. I'm going to use uh, three quarter inch uh, hardwood plywood from my favorite home center store, which is Lowe's. And I'm going to cut it all up and I'll put it in here. I um, did a few iterations of the tape, and this side is not the layout that I'm going to use. But this side is the layout that I'm going to use until I change it, probably before I start. Um, I got a cabinet today. And the reason for the cabinet is because uh, on the bottom, there's going to be a bunch of records down here because I have a bunch of records. And then the record player is going to sit on top of this cabinet. And it also is to hide the electrical outlet that is behind there. And at first, um, I was going to have LED lighting in the shelving, but then that means you have to bring the shelving out past the books. I plan on putting mostly books in here. You have to bring the shelving out past the books and so the light can shine on the face of the book so you can actually read the title, which is one of the problems I have in my current junk room. It's just too dark in there. Um, but with that, the shelf is too long and you leave a lot of space for dust. I don't want dust. So, uh, my plan is to have them shallow shelves and the books either be right at the edge of the shelf or even stick out a quarter of an inch or so. And I'm going to use um, false backs to basically push the books to the edge of the shelf. Um, this will be raised up three and a half inches and then it'll be put on a platform. And so it'll be up here roughly. You can see that my tape layout is roughly to scale. And then uh, once the base is in place and I'm happy with it, then I'll start building sides. And I'm going to leave this piece last. And basically the, the width of this piece determined, is determined by how much space the two sides take up. And the cabinet and then all the shelving above it is going to stick out at least two inches beyond what the side cabinets do. So it'll be more, or side bookcases do. So it'll be more like a, a 3D effect. It's either going to be two or three or maybe even four inches, but I don't think four. I think two or three is the max. And um, I think that's about it. I'll show you my current junk room. Which is the room right next door. I was going to keep it this room and then move all the books that are in this bookshelf and all the junk that's in this bookshelf into the other room and then build a bookshelf here and then move all the stuff back. But then I decided with the weird shape of this room, it's just not a good room for my junk room. So the previous room used to be the guest room and now I'm going to make the guest room the junk room and this junk room here will become the new guest room. Um, you know, have a big, the wall in the back on the other side is bigger. It's 11 feet, this one's like 10 maybe. And then my books will be against the outer wall, which is kind of good because my books are heavy. And they are on this wall. I have an assortment of goodies, um, a giant wooden hand, a lot of books. These are a lot of local Virginia history books, which I like. I've been collecting for a while. There's a lot of maps. There's just a lot of stuff. And some of this isn't mine. Some of it's leading. But most of the books are mine. Another reason to put it in the back of the house is because people can see my goodies from the road. Like they could see my RC car collection. And that's probably not a good idea. So, and then later, um, once I'm done with this bookcase, I'm going to make a map holding station that basically like holds all my maps and my big book. I have this giant book over here. That is a Prince of an old newspaper from the area in the 19 mid 1940s around World War II and the book is 18 inches wide by 24 inches tall and almost three inches thick so I'm gonna make a 
stand to hold that where I can actually open it and read it. And then hopefully you get this stuff organized and um, have some fun doing it. So come along for the journey, see what I screw up, which will probably be something, and it'll be fun. Hello boys and girls. It's been a while since I chatted. Ooh, look how big I look. I'm using a new lens, as you can tell, the stuff changed. It's an ultra wide lens, so I look really big. Woo! Wow, okay. So, um, I've been busy. Um, I had a couple setbacks, which was very unfortunate because I wasted a bunch of time and a little bit of wood. Um, I got a, um, what I thought was a straight piece of wood from my favorite store Lowe's um, to use as a straight edge to cut all these boards the exact same width. All these boards are a little bit less than eight inches. They're like seven and like maybe seven sixty. I mean, that's seven and seven. I don't know something. Seven eighths maybe. Um, but they all need to be the same exact width, all the way down the rip of the board, which was eight feet long, because I used eight foot by four foot sheets of plywood to cut all these little things. And it was important for them to all be the same size, or they wouldn't line up right here. And what I happened was I got a one by four maybe or one by three um, red oak hardwood. And at the store, you know, I lined it up. It looked very straight. And I get home and I start ripping boards like crazy. And then I start to go cut the little pieces up. And before I knew it, I realized that they weren't completely square. So, and the board like maybe Maybe two thirds of it was really straight, or maybe three quarters of it. And at the end, it just kind of took a little bow. And so, um, it quickly uh, came evident that some of the wood was crooked. And so, I got, couldn't use any of that. So, I got rid of all that. I bought a new piece of wood, or I had some, and I, I went to the back to the store, and I was looking for a a circular saw rip fence thing and uh, the only one I found it was like one that had a saw that came with it and it cut right along the aluminum edge and it was like 500 bucks and I was like no thanks but I did find a guide it comes in two 50 inch pieces and then you screw the two together in the middle with a little bracket and I bought that it was only 20 bucks I thought that was cheap um, the only problem with it is you know the bracket isn't completely snug and so if you push against it it will bow too. And so what I did is I made little pieces basically. I took a piece of wood similar to this and then I put a, another piece on the edge just like this and I bolted it to it or screwed it to it. And then on the piece of plywood I was able to put it on the edge of the plywood and then put my metal rail and then clamp it down with my clamps. And then what I did is I took, you know, I put one of these on, made two of these, two exactly the same size. Put one on the left, one on the right, and then once I clamped the aluminum guide down, I took the one off from one side and put it in the middle. And I wasn't able to clamp the middle of the rail because it's in the middle of the plywood. And so I took a flat piece like this and I put two screws in it and basically screwed it down to the wood. <coughs> and that kept a, the aluminum rail in place while I pushed against it with my um, circular saw and ripped all the boards. Um, it did leave two little tiny holes in the plywood at various places um, and they are, you can see them somewhere, but by the time I go back and fill all the screw holes with putty and um, paint it, you'll never be able to tell where they are because they're small screw holes. So um, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far. I've made some design changes. Um, originally this was going to be all one level all the way across, but as you can see, it sticks out. I thought that uh, since the cabinet at the bottom, which I got at Lowe's too, this is the only piece I'm not making. Um, I figured since the, uh, the cabinet stuck out, that the middle section could stick out too. And so it sticks out a little bit more. And I have a huge book that I plan on putting right here. The book is 24 inches tall. By 18 inches wide, it's a huge book, and uh, it's going to go up here to be stored. 
There's not a shelf that goes above this, but I need to paint this first because once I put that board up above here, it's only going to be about right here. And once I do that, I won't be able to get paint in there, which isn't a big deal. But um, since I'm going to be sliding that book in and out, I want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm either going to paint it or I might cover it with some type of fake leather just so that the book has something soft to rest on. Oh, and then um, I, uh, I made these bigger too. Originally this board, originally this board wasn't going to be here. I was just going to bolt this shelf directly to this board. But then I decided that I should build it in modular. And so I should build the left and then the right, or the right and the left, whatever. And then build the middle piece. And then it should be standalone so I can pick it up and take it somewhere. Take it outside, sand it, paint it, and then I can just push it back into place. So I decided I was going to have the board here and then they're going to have two boards sandwiched together and there was going to be no space here but then i'm like well maybe i'll put some space and it won't look so flimsy it'll look more bulkier and so i added with one spacer in here which is the width of a piece of plywood so three quarters of an inch and then i didn't like how that looked so much it was okay but i thought that maybe a little bit bigger would be better and so i put another piece of plywood in there as another spacer and that gave me the bulkness. And that's, I think, three inches there, maybe two and a half. And so I'll finish that out with um, some molding and make it look nice. And on top of here is going to be, I got some pieces of rough cut cherry. And it's really rough and warped, but I'm going to give it to my friend Greg. Hi, Greg. And uh, he's going to plant it for me. And then I'm going to stick them all together and then glue them and clamp them. And then when they're dry, I will... You know, cut the final shape of this and then probably put some wax on it or some type of oil on it and then I'll uh, put it on here and then this section will sit on top of that so I need to get that done soon um, before I sand and paint all this or I guess it'll be done afterwards <coughs> and let's see oh at the top um, I left the top open Partially because I didn't want it to go all the way to the ceiling. I needed some room to maneuver these in and out. And they just, they don't need to go up that high. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cap that off. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it out to probably the same distance as this cabinet. So 16 inches, I believe it is. And then um, do a nice molding up there. But inside, like uh, this piece is not supposed to stay here. It's gonna this piece is going to get replaced with a longer one that comes out 16 inches. And then I'm going to cut holes in there and put um, a couple of lights. I'm going to put a light in the middle here, a light in the middle here, and then one in the middle there. And so I'll be able to uh, shine light on the books. Uh, one of the problems I have in the other junk room is it's too dark. And I can't see the titles of my books. So um, I'm going to do that. And I think that will be nice. I just need several layers of molding. And then um, I put this piece of molding over here. This is just to kind of cap off the end. Again, there's a voided space over there, kind of like this one, so that I have room to wiggle it in um, to the space because it's pretty tight. So I kind of wish this side, or the two side casings were bigger since I'm making the side casings in the middle bigger, but I think it'll look all right. Um, I can't stack this molding though. There's really, eh, I probably could, but I'm probably not going to. So it'll just be a single layer of molding there. And then at the bottom, there'll be molding along the bottom to tie in with the side. I'm probably gonna redo the molding on all the flooring. It's that really just contractor grade from the mid eighties. My house is old, but it's not old enough to be cool. It was made in 1983, so, and it's very, very basic, so. I'm going to uh, maybe freshen up a little bit, but this room, the molding wise in this room will probably match nothing else in the house. The rest of the house is pretty, I'm, I'm pretty minimal, minimalistic, minimalistic, minimal, minimal, minimalistic when it comes to moldings around the other parts of the house. But uh, this one, since it's a library, I'm not calling it the junk room anymore. It's going to be the library. Um, I'm going to make it all like crazy moldings everywhere. So yeah. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, it might be a few days before I get back working on it. I think the next steps are to take all these back out, sand them, prime them, paint them. All of them get a backing. There's a half inch plywood backing that goes on the back of them. And so you won't see the wall between them or behind them. 
which is good. That's what I want. Um, it'll be all one cohesive unit. And uh, I'm gonna try to build out the top and then put the lights in. I bought the lights last night, so I just need to wire them up and, and all that. I'm gonna run a, a wire down through here. There's a cavity on the back side. It doesn't hit the wall, obviously. And then uh, there's an electrical outlet right down here. So and I'm gonna cut the back of this cabinet out. It's only 12 inches deep. So I'm gonna cut the back of it out so that uh, I have a deeper cabinet and so I can access the uh, electrical socket that's in there. Yep. And then uh, a whole lot is left. All the trim edges have to be molded, has to put on be put on those. But I need to paint the unit before I can do that, but I have to make sure that I don't paint the edge because glue will stick to the paint and then the paint will crack and peel and the molding will fall off. So I might tape the edges and then paint it. I don't know if I'm gonna roller paint or if I'm gonna brush paint or a combination of both, or if I'm gonna buy a paint sprayer and try paint spraying it. I've never use one of those paint spraying hobbyist house painter things so uh maybe i can rent one or borrow one i don't know we'll figure it out okay uh, oh i have a new hat on today it's a new day a new hat <gasps> hello again boys and girls i thought i'd bring you into the garage to show you that i'm actually cutting the wood instead of having someone else do it or something so here's my garage most of the time i like to do motorcycle stuff and not wood stuff, but sometimes I do wood stuff. So there's a lot of sawdust around. I think these are going to be my last major cuts for the bookshelf. The rest of it will just be little stuff, either trim work or maybe like a backer board, which is no big deal. So once I get these cut, then I can clean this area up and just get rid of some of this excess wood and make room for other stuff. I got my precise measurements right here. So I'm going to lay it out and use that piece of wood as a straight edge. Um, there's a factory edge on it, which is an edge from the factory, obviously. Um, so I'm going to use that as a straight edge and cut two pieces that are 46 and a quarter inches long. And then for the middle of the cabinet or the middle of the bookcase, that top piece needs to be 32 and 11 sixteenths. These top pieces are for the very top of the shelf. They're going to come out. And that's what the light's going to be in. I'm using the, the the shelf on the other side of the garage as a... Let's, let's just cut some stuff. I'm going to uh, measure it out. And then put a ruler on there. Put an offset. Put the straight edge board down. Clamp it down. And then cut with my trusty battery powered saw. So be bored for a while.
Boom. Boom. Waka waka boom. Okay. Okay, talking. Uh, this last board um, has a bunch of screws in it, but no one is ever going to see the top of these boards, so um, I'm going to use it. It's uh, close to the right size I need, and it's the last piece of big board I have that's wide enough, so I'm going to use it, but uh, I have to go get my drills, so that's enough of cutting today. Surprise, boys and girls! The bookshelf is done. I didn't bring you along for it, I'm sorry. Um, it's been about a month since my last update. If I remember correctly, it was around uh, Christmas time, and now it is the end of January. So it's been a while. It's been a little bit of a pain in the butt. Had some problems with the uh, construction. Um, I was using a crooked board as my straight edge, and I didn't know it was crooked. Oh, did you like my hat today? It's from my friend Raf. He was in uh, Afghanistan for a while, and uh, he brought back this hat. And uh, it's cold outside. We got like a bunch of snow the other day. There's a window over here you can't see. But uh, we got a bunch of snow, and um, it's cold as crap outside now. So I uh, have my hat and my scarf on from Afghanistan, which sometimes it's hot, but maybe this is from the mountain area. Um, hi Raf, I don't know where you are. I think you're overseas somewhere, but I don't know. So, all right. Uh, so this is what happened. Uh, I built it all, painted it all. It took 2.25 gallons of paint, which I never thought it was going to take that much time or that much paint. And um, these columns here slowed me down because um, they're kind of a weird size. Like this board is like this long, and then this board is only like this long. 
And then there's a nominal piece in between that's somewhat different between the bottom and the top because it's a little bit crooked. Um, and I originally made these out of boards I bought directly from Lowe's. They were like, you know, pine or something, um, like trim boards. And they were crooked. Um, they were like warped and twisted. And there was no fixing that. And so I built them two times out of that wood. I went to the store, got the wood, and then it was crooked. And I went back and got more wood, and it was still crooked. Um, it was just a pain in the butt. So then on the third time, I decided to make it out of plywood, which is the same plywood I used for the bookshelf. And that worked out much better. Um, I remeasured everything, made sure everything was correct, cut all the boards, uh, put them together, and then painted them all. And then put the trim piece on the front. So you probably can't see in the video, but this piece is a little bit further back than this piece. So it's like a three-dimensional thing. And this whole column sticks out further than here, you know, about three inches or so. And then the front of the top sticks out. Uh, the top cap is a four-piece molding cap. It originally was only supposed to be two-piece. There was going to be a uh, basically a baseboard upside down. And then there was going to be the piece of crown that went to the ceiling. But since these pieces here dropped down further than I thought, I had to drop this piece down. Well, actually, the when I put the original piece in and then put the crown in, there wasn't enough room. So I had to put a backer piece on here and drop it down below this piece. And then I figured, well, I have one down here. I might as well put one up top. And I think it looks good. And uh, the reveals are, are pretty much dead on equal. So there's a, a 5 8 inch reveal right here. And then there's a 5 8 inch reveal right here. And then there's a 5 8 inch reveal right there. So it's pretty uh, pretty even. I like it. And uh, I put the lights in. Um, the lights are wired. They, there's a plug underneath here in the back. And then the wire runs up through the hollow uh, channel behind this. And there's a junction box here that it runs into and then splits and goes to the two lights. And there's a, uh, it's a wireless switch, but a little box down there you plug the uh, cable into it and then you hit this and the light goes off it's wireless I was gonna run a wire from that outlet intercept it with a switch and then run it up to the ceiling but there's uh, I think about 18 inches of loose um, insulation like blown in insulation in the attic and all that would have made a mess so uh, I just decided to use the um, the uh, wireless switch, which I got from Amazon. I couldn't find one locally, so I got one from Amazon. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, I put a lot of coats of paint on there, like probably three coats, and it felt like it was kind of like sticky, and I was worried that the books were gonna stick to it, because once you put the weight of the books on the paint, you kind of dig into it. So what I did is I lightly sanded all the shelves, and I think what that did is it made it, it scuffed it up and made it more, uh, I don't know, maybe flat, not really flat, but non-sticky. So I think the books will slide better. So um, this wood here came from, I bought some cherry, this is cherry wood. I bought some rough cut cherry planks from an auction in Pennsylvania I was at a few months ago. And um, my neighbor and friend, uh, Greg, he has a planer and a joiner and all that good other woodworking stuff. And he took the planks, planed them, jointed them, I think, and then um, glued them together for me on an oversized slab and then I basically brought it here, cut it to shape or cut it to size and then I put some linseal oil or some type of oil on it and um, made the color come out. So it's very nice wood. It's very, When you cut it, it's very fine dust. It's not like regular sand dust. It's very chunky. It's very fine dust, almost like uh, MDF, but not that fine. It's uh, pretty nice stuff. And it has character. It's got a little crack there and a little crack there, so it's got a knot there. I'll make it. The record player is going to go there. Records are going to go on the bottom, and then books basically on the top. I have a humongous book that goes right here. I'll show you that once I put it in place. Um, this thing is uh, bolted to the wall. There's uh, studs behind that wall, obviously, and each unit. They're built in three different units, so um, I built this one first, then that one and then made the inside one, you know, the right size. And they're attached with pocket hole screws up on the top. So 
they are not going anywhere. I'm a little worried about it in the winter and summertime when the humidity rises. Like right now it's dead of winter, so the humidity level in here is about 55%. Um, in the summertime it may rise to, let's say, 65%. And sometimes you'll see cracks in the baseboard and even cracks in the drywall. And that's what happens is the, the skeleton, the studs behind the walls shrink in the wintertime. Then they expand slightly in the um, summertime and you get a crack. So uh, since I built it in the dead of winter, low humidity, I'm a little bit worried that it's going to swell a little bit. But uh, I don't think it'll buckle. There's definitely gaps between these columns and then there's a gap at the top. But you know, all that trim is attached to it. so. It may cause problems, but I don't know. Hopefully not. And then once I put all the books in there, I don't know. Yes. So, if my math is correct, it's 71 linear feet of bookshelf space. Woohoo! That's a lot of books. Um, I think that's it. So, um, yeah, I like it a lot. And if I ever move, I'm not taking it out. I'm going to leave it there. So, it's there for good forever. I did think about painting these though, and the inside of here between these two columns, painting them a certain color, but I don't know what color. Maybe a color that matches this, or maybe some crazy color like red or something, I don't know. Uh, but I don't know. For now, I'm just going to leave it white. All white. I wanted it all white so that the light would ricochet. Um, my other room, all the bookshelves are black, and they're like Ikea bookshelves. And um, it's just very dark in there. I can't see the the titles of the books. And a lot of my books I use for research, so when I want to write something, I go and look for a book, and it bothers me when I can't find it. So, um, in my other room, I have to use my flashlight and on my phone and uh, shine on the titles. I'm getting old, I can't see. So, okay. Um, I'll be back when all the books are in place, I think. Okay, bye bye. Hello boys and girls, I'm finally done with my bookcase. I almost forgot to make a final video showing the completed bookcase. I um, put all my junk in there, as you can see, um, lots of junk. All this junk was in six different bookcases on the other uh, room, in my junk room, is what it was called. I'm now referring to this new room as my library room. Woo! -hoo! Um, so yeah, it's all done. It uh, took like six weeks. I have no idea how much it cost. I might have started keeping track, but it quickly spiraled out of control. So I'd just rather not know. Um, I don't think the material was that expensive, except for the trim is expensive when you buy an individual piece. It's pretty expensive um, for what you get, you know? It's a piece of wood. Um, the plywood's pretty cheap compared to other wood, um, and you get a big piece for $35 is what I bought, and then, you know, you can use it for a long time, so, uh, I think it was, I don't even remember, maybe four pieces for this, and then the backings are half inch plywood, but the, uh, the real stuff is three quarter inch plywood, hard plywood, I don't know what it's called, probably oak or something, I don't know, it's not birch or anything like that, it's the mid-grade stuff, um, and then uh, I had to buy a few tools to do it. I bought a pin nailer, which is fairly cheap from Harbor Freight. I bought a new table saw from Lowe's, which was eh, not too bad, a couple hundred bucks. And I bought a new miter saw. My miter saw over time, my old one, um, it was cutting crooked and made me mad. So I bought a brand new one, and wouldn't you know, it cut crooked too. It was about a half a degree off. And I was very picky, so I took it apart and adjusted it, and I think I got it zeroed on, so that's good. So I had to buy those things, and uh, I bought a track to, like, rip the plywood, so it just added up. Um, and then paint, you know, I, I thought I could paint it in one bucket, no problem, but it took a lot of paint. I think it was one and a half buckets, well, one and a half gallons, I guess. Um, so I don't remember. I'm trying to think of what I'm forgetting to tell you, but I don't remember. I guess we'll just have to ask questions. Um, I have goodies in there. This is where uh, all the wiring comes in. Oh, I got a new record player. This little machine, I was looking for an old school 
stereo from like the 80s, you know, um, that would play records, the radio, and cassette tapes because I still have my collection of cassette tapes from high school and I wanted to play them. Um, but I couldn't find one. I kept buying a couple at auctions for really cheap and they wound up not working. Shocker. And um, I found this on Amazon. It's a Victrola and it's brand new. And it plays the radio, CDs, it has Bluetooth, which I can hook to my phone and play videos from YouTube. I can play the sound through here. Um, it has an auxiliary point, so I can plug something else in. I don't even know what I would plug in. I don't know. And um, it has a record player on the top, which I haven't even used yet. And then it uh, plays cassette tape. Put it back here, and I have a Metallica cassette tape right here, which I can't play because YouTube will get mad at me. But um, I was really pleased when I found this brand new unit that plays all that stuff. So I have a one unit that plays everything. And I was worried it wasn't going to be loud enough because I want to crank it up and hear it throughout the house. But it's super loud. So um, I rock it out. I don't even think I've used a CD player or the record player yet. I've just used the radio and tape player and the Bluetooth. Well, I have uh, lots of books. But as I buy more books, I'll probably just get rid of these magazines. These are old popular mechanics magazines from back in the day, right after World War II, when people were building stuff and making cool things. So it's funny stuff like that. And a lot of these, they tell you how to make stuff and you can, uh, You can show you how to make stuff. Look at this article, that's funny. This is from 1955 when Volkswagen was pretty much brand new. And um, there's a little article on it. How surprising it performs. I don't know if anybody knew in 1955 that this would be the most produced car ever with well over, what, 50 million units or 25 million units made or something. It's pretty amazing. So I have these and you know I, I plan to look at them slowly and see what's in them, blah, blah, blah. But you know, honestly, I'll never get to that. So I'll keep them because they're cool looking. And then when I need more space for more books, I'll either sell them or get rid of them somehow. I don't know. Let's just leave that right there. And uh, yeah, that's about it, I guess. I think it's pretty. Um, yeah, I haven't found any flaws to it, I guess, um, I don't know, my girl Tina Turner's over there, did you see her? That used to be in my dad's bedroom for like 20 years, and then when he passed away, I uh, took it, and uh, I was downstairs for a while, but now it's upstairs, so, she hangs out in here with me, oh, man, I guess that's it, so. It's a fun project. I'm glad it's over. Uh, it took like six weeks maybe, maybe longer. Um, and it's over, so that's good. I think my next project is either going to be a contraption that holds my maps and then lets me fold my maps out so I can look at them. I have these big, long, big maps for like local history stuff. Or I want to build a uh, Murphy bed in the other room. This used to be the guest room. The junk room was one room that way. And they've switched now, so this is now my library room. And that room over there is going to be my uh, guest room, but I don't really need a guest room full time. So I'm going to put a Murphy bed in there and then uh, have the bed hidden most of the time. And then I can, you know, do stuff, other stuff in there. I don't know what the heck I'm doing there, but probably store more junk. And then when somebody does come over, the rare occasion I have guests, I'll just fold the Murphy bed down. So uh, I'll probably start drawing that out soon and maybe start working on it. So. I also have a bathroom to remodel, so maybe I'll do that first. I don't know. But I like how this turned out, so maybe I'll build another one somewhere. That'd be awesome sauce. Okay, happy building.